What is up, ladies and gentlemen, in this video walkthrough, we'll be going over some of the intuition behind alpha beta pruning. So the quick agenda for this video is that first we'll evaluate a game tree. We'll just be taking problem three from the regular discussion, and we'll try to gain some intuition for where we could potentially do some pruning as we're evaluating a game tree. So that's the first thing we're going to be doing today. The next thing is we're going to look at like a slightly harder example and try to generalize this intuition that we've developed. Okay, and then after generalizing the intuition, we're going to form the alpha beta pruning algorithm, right? At a high level, we'll try to form what the alpha beta pruning algorithm is doing, and then we'll go back to the same example in the beginning and we'll run alpha beta pruning. Okay, so with this in mind, let's dive in. So question three on the regular discussion worksheet is very standard alpha beta pruning problem, okay? So we're given some game tree here. And in this class, we denote a maximizing node as this upward triangle, and we denote a minimizing node as this downward triangle, right? And when we approach game trees, a game tree is actually a really, really cool idea that helps us find optimal moves in two-player games, okay? So you can kind of imagine that we have a maximizing player Right? And you also have a minimizing player. So pictorially, let's say we have some sort of minimizing player in red, and we have some sort of maximizing player in light green. Right? So how a game tree essentially works is that each player kind of alternates taking turns. Right? So let's say it's the maximizer's player's turn first, and they have two options of what they can do on their turn. So since the maximizing player has two options, you can kind of see the tree has two branches here, right? Where each branch kind of represents the maximizer choosing one of those two options. And then what's going to happen is that we have two possibilities for where the minimizer could be. And then we consider both possibilities of what the minimizer does, right? And then it's the maximizer's turn again and so on, right? So a game tree is essentially playing out a game for a short period of time and considering all the possibilities for what can happen, right? So in this case, what you can kind of think about is, let's say we're playing a two-player game. The green considers both possibilities. Then the red or the minimizer considers both possibilities. And then the maximizer gets one more turn and considers both possibilities here. right? And now what we're kind of left with is that we have these, I'll put them in blue, these states at the bottom. right? So one of these blue states, you can kind of think about it as the value in the game at this point in time. OK, so assuming that we have some sort of way of quantifying the value in the game at some point in time, you can kind of think to yourself, if I'm the maximizer and I make this move, and then if I'm the minimizer and I make this move, and then if I'm the maximizer again and I make this move, we result in some game state that has value three, right? So that's kind of what this game tree is telling us. So as the maximizer, we want to finally end up maybe in a game state with as big value as possible, right? And as the minimizer, we hopefully want to end up in a game state with as small value as possible, right? That's the idea between the maximizer and the minimizer, okay? So because of that, we're a game tree kind of tells us what decision we should make, OK? So it's going to help the maximizer say, hey, should I do this move or should I do this move, right? That's what the game tree is trying to tell us, or helps us decide. OK, so with that in mind, let's kind of dive in here and see how we can fill in the values for a game tree. So starting from the bottom, we're going to see we have some sort of node here, right? It's a maximizing node. I think it's always the easiest to start when we're filling in a game tree from the bottom to the top. Okay, so starting here, we're going to process this tree from left to right. Okay, so if I'm this maximizer node and I have two possibilities, seven or three, well, I would rather take the seven possibility, right? So I'm going to say the value for this maximizer node is seven. Then let's maybe hop over to this maximizer node. And we'll see here at this maximizer node, we have three possibilities again, 10, 11, and 4. And if I'm a maximizer, I would choose the 11 possibility. Okay. 
Now, let's say I'm the minimizer at this node right here. Notice that there's two possibilities for what I can do. I can either go to the left, which leaves me in a game state where the maximizer would go to the right, or I can go to the right, in which case the maximizer would go straight down. So it's hopefully easy to see here that the minimizer would prefer to go to the left. Because if the minimizer goes to the left, then the maximizer's best bet is going to the right, and we end up in a game state with value 7, right? Which is better for the minimizer than going to the right. OK, so now we're kind of coming back here. We can kind of fill in this entire node with the same logic. We'll do it a little quicker. So we see here that maximizer will go to the right. The maximizer will go to the left here. And then the minimizer here will go to the left. Right. And then finally, at the top, we can see, hey, the maximizer would rather go to the left. OK, so that's kind of the general intuition for how we're building a game tree. So the idea between alpha beta pruning is that in an actual game setting, this game tree that we're considering can be really, really big, right? So if this is really, really big, let's say it's really big, then it's going to take us a long time to evaluate this game tree, right? So what if there's some way of pruning this game tree, okay? So what pruning means is that we're going to avoid, let me just write it out here. So pruning is the idea that we can avoid going to certain subtrees if we can deduce they aren't needed. So I purposely kind of made this definition of pruning very broad. As we keep going in this video, I'll try to make the definition more precise. But now at a high level, pruning is the idea that we avoid going to certain subtrees if we can deduce that this subtree isn't needed. OK, so what does that kind of mean? Well, I think it's easiest if, if we just kind of prune this tree right here. OK, so let's kind of start from the beginning and let's run Let's try filling in this game tree again. OK, so over here, we're going to choose 7 again. And then let's say I hop over here. So right as I see, let's say I'm at this node right here. OK, and let's say I see the value of 10. OK, let's say I see this 10 value. OK, so after seeing this 10 value, Let's kind of make some observations. So the first observation I can make, I'm going to move this here for now. We'll see these alpha and betas come a bit later. So the first observation I make is that since this is a maximizing node, if I see a 10 to the left, we know the value of that maximizing mode is going to be at least 10, right? So what I'm going to denote next to this node is that the value of this node is at least 10. And what we knew from evaluating this maximizer node on the left hand side is that the value of this minimizer node, since we're guaranteed a value of seven of going to the left, we know the value of this minimizer node is at most seven. So with this in mind, what we can kind of realize here is that if this minimizer is guaranteed a value of seven by going to the left, and this maximizer node is always going to spit out a value that's bigger than 10, we can kind of think to ourselves that the minimizer is never going to go to the right, right? It doesn't really make any sense for the minimizer to go to the right. The reason is because if the minimizer goes to the right, it's going to get a value that's greater than 10. Well, it wouldn't want a value that's greater than 10 because if it goes to the left, it's guaranteed a value of seven, which is smaller than 10, and the minimizer wants the smallest value possible. So because of that, what we can do is we can, let me use another color here, is we can prune these values, okay, or these branches in this tree. So what that means is we don't even have to look or evaluate these game states, right? There's no need for us to evaluate these game states because we can deduce 
that these game states aren't needed, right? Okay, so that's the idea of pruning. Well, kind of coming back here, go, knowing that this minimizer will go to the left, we can say the value of this minimizer is seven, right? So now, kind of coming back to this left-hand side of the tree, let's keep going using that same intuition we developed just a couple seconds ago. So let's start down here, right? It's easiest to kind of evaluate a game tree from the left, bottom left up, okay? So over here, we'll see that the value of this node is going to be five. I'm gonna put it in green, right? Because we go to the right. Um, let me just add in all of these, okay? So pause here and try to figure out to yourself, like, is it possible that we can do any sort of pruning with the current state of the tree, okay? Okay, so kind of coming back to the video, what we'll notice here is that if I'm this minimizer node, I'm guaranteed a value of at most five by going to the left, right? If I'm this maximizer node, I'm guaranteed a value of at least seven by going to the left. You guys see that? If this maximizer node goes to the left, it gets this value of seven. If this minimizer node goes to the left, it gets this value of five. So what we can kind of see here is that since this maximizer is guaranteed a value of at least seven, and this minimizer value, or this minimizer node is only going to give a value of at most five, there's no incentive for this maximizer node to go to the right. So what we can do here is we can prune this entire subtree, right? So all of this subtree, we just don't even have to consider. And that's the beauty of alpha of pruning is that it really improves our runtime, right? To avoid going to considering different subtrees makes our code run much faster. All right, so with this kind of idea of pruning, let's try to formalize the intuition a bit more, right? It seems like we're kind of just looking at this tree and we're figuring it out on the fly, but it would be cool if we could kind of formalize this intuition into an algorithm. So that's what we'll do for the next half of this video. All right, so let's consider this game tree that I've drawn up over here, okay? So what we can kind of see here in this game tree is that we have kind of two maximizer nodes, then we have two minimizer nodes right here, and then we have kind of different game states, right? We have like five of these game states. So pause the video here and try to figure out just using the intuition that we talked about before, if any of these branches can be pruned, okay? To actually give the video a pause, do try it on your own. All right, so let's kind of like walk through this intuition that we've de developed before. So if I'm looking at this node here, this value is at most going to be two, right? Because if I go to the left, this maximizer node is guaranteed a value of two. So looking at this minimizer node, we know its value is going to be at most six, right? So can I prune this node here? Well, not really, because somehow, let's say like a value of four came from somewhere down here, then notice that this maximizer would want to go to the right. So we can't actually do any pruning yet, okay? And then what we'll notice is that this maximizer on the next level down here is ensured a value of at least four if I go to the left, right? So is it possible to prune this branch here? Hmm. Let's kind of think to ourselves. Well, over here, we're guaranteed a value of at most six, right? Or since... Yeah, we're guaranteed a value of at most six here. So could we prune this branch? Well, let's say that this branch gives us a five, right? Let's say that like a five comes from down here. Notice that the value of this node would then be five and this minimizer would wanna go to the right. So we can't actually prune this node here, right? Just to iterate that once more, notice that 
if it turns out that this mac minimizer node down here sends up a value of five, what's going to happen is that this node would have a value of five and this minimizer would want to go to the right. So because that, that there's a possibility that we go to the right, we can't actually do any pruning on this branch. Okay, so now considering this branch down here, what we'll see is that since this maximizer is guaranteed a value of at least four by going to the left, and this minimizer is value is at most three, hopefully we can kind of see here that we will prune this branch because the maximizer wouldn't want to go to the right since this value is at most three and it's guaranteed a value of at least four by going to the left, okay? So now let's kind of like make it a bit trickier and let's swap these two values here. So let's make this four and let's make this two. So my question to you all is like, does anything change? Okay, so pause the video here, kind of think to yourself, can we still prune seven like so? Okay, actually pause the video. I think this is a good question. Can we actually prune this branch right here? Okay, so coming back, hopefully you guys did pause it. The reason is yes, we can actually prune this value of seven. Okay, so why can we still prune this branch here? Well, kind of thinking about it to yourself, if we're looking, I'm getting rid of this, if we're looking at this tree at kind of like a big picture, if I'm considering this maximizing node at the top, notice by going to the left, it's ensured a value of at least four, right? So if I'm considering this minimizer node all the way down here, notice that the value of this minimizer node is going to be at most three, okay? So what you can kind of think of to yourself is we know that this minimizer node is going to give you give us a value of at most three. So if we're kind of considering any possibility on in this subtree, right? If we're considering any leaf of value in this subtree, notice for this leaf value to be important, it needs to somehow get passed up all the way up this tree. Right, this leaf value from somewhere in this subtree needs to get passed up all the way to the top of the tree for it to be of importance, right? Well, what we can kind of think of to ourselves is that any value that this minimizer node is going to give us is going to be at most three. So we know that if we have some value that comes all the way up this tree and its value is smaller than three, right? we know that this maximizer node all the way up here isn't going to actually use that value because it's guaranteed a value of four by going to the left, okay? So this pruning example might be a little trickier because it's not like one level down like the previous example, right? In the previous example, or all the examples we've seen up this point, usually like we kind of just look at our parent. But in this case, now we're looking at all the way up here. Right. So because of that, it may seem like, hey, now it's gotten a lot more complicated. I have to keep track of parents that are much higher than the current node that we're at. So it did get a bit trickier, but now I'm going to introduce some terminology that'll help us formalize this into an algorithm, this idea that we've kind of been building up so far. Okay. So let's introduce what alpha and beta really mean. Okay. And these are the alpha and betas behind alpha beta pruning. So this is our alpha value and this is our beta value, right? This is how we denote them, okay? So let's first hear, hear the definitions for what alpha and beta are. So alpha is the best value seen on the branch so far for the maximizer, okay? And beta is the best value seen on the branch so far for the minimizer, okay? And what's really important here to understand is that the branch kind of corresponds to the branch leading up to the current node. So in this case, this is our current branch when we're kind of considering this node down here, okay? So if we're considering this node down here, right? 
what we know is that if we're considering all the values along this branch, right, the best value for a maximizer node at any point along this branch is the value of four, right, by going to the left here. Okay, so what we're going to say is that when we're evaluating this node, the value of alpha is equal to four. Okay, so just to iterate once more, when we're evaluating this node here, the reason the value of alpha is equal to four is that alpha is the best or the largest value that we've seen on the branch so far for the maximizer. Okay, so the maximizer has seen two values on the branch so far. This maximizer node has seen a four, and this maximizer node has seen a two. So the better of those two values is a four. So we can kind of say the best possibility for the maximizer node up to this point on the tree is a value of four, okay? So now if we're considering the minimizer here, which is beta, or beta is the value for the minimizer, what beta is, is it's the best or the smallest value seen so far, seen on the current branch for the minimizer, okay? So up to this point, the minimizer has seen a value of six here, right? And this minimizer just saw a value of three. So if we're kind of considering all of the minimizer nodes on this branch, right? The best value any of the minimizer nodes have seen is this value of three, okay? So what we can kind of say is that the value of beta, after we've kind of looked at this three node, right? I'll kind of shade in all of the nodes we've seen up to this point. So the value of beta after we've looked at this three node is three, okay? So now let's kind of think about what it means when alpha is, let's just say greater than beta, okay? So, when alpha is greater than beta, which is the case in this example, what this is telling us, right, assuming that we're at a minimizing node, is that somewhere up the branch, the maximizer has a value better than any value the current minimizer node could evaluate to. Okay, so what I've said so far is that in this case, when alpha is greater than beta, my claim for what this means is that somewhere up this branch, right, somewhere up this branch, the maximizer node has a value, right, in this case, that value is four, which is better than any value the current minimizer node could evaluate to, right? So let's kind of see why that's the case. So if we're looking at this node right here, notice that somewhere up this branch exists this maximizer node that has a value of four, right? It could go to the left and get a value of four. And that value of four is better than any value that this current minimizer node could evaluate to, right? If we're looking at this current minimizer node, after seeing this value of three, we know that this value is going to be at most three. So kind of considering this maximizer node with that in mind, Right, this maximizer node is going to go to the left instead of choosing any value that's kind of down here to the right. Okay, so this is in essence the idea behind alpha beta pruning is that if we're currently at a minimizer node, right, and this condition is true, right? So if this condition is true that alpha is greater than beta, and we're at a minimizer node, this tells us that the maximizer node has a value somewhere up the branch, right? Some maximizer node exists whose value is better than any value the current minimizer node could evaluate to, okay? And it turns out that if we're currently at a maximizing node, 
okay? And this condition is true, right? If we're currently at a maximizing node and this condition is true, then it's also an indication that we need to prune, okay? So if we're at a maximizer node, if we're at a minimizer node and alpha is greater than beta, then we can prune, okay? And it actually turns out that this, we can prune even if alpha is equal to beta, okay? So to see why that's the case, consider that the value of this node is four, right? In this case, what would happen is that beta would be four here. And what we'll notice is that alpha is equal to beta, right? So in this case, my claim is that when alpha is equal to beta, right, which is what the less greater than or equal to inequality implies, then we can prune, okay? So, then we can prune. Okay, and the reason we can prune when alpha is equal to beta is because we know that the value of this minimizer node is going to be at most four, right? So we know that if we're kind of considering any leaf node over here that could somehow make its way to the top, we know that leaf node is going to have a value of at most four, right? So let's say that like this node was four and for some reason we decide to choose this leaf node over this one, right? Well, this value of four will keep getting passed up here and eventually the maximizer node will say, I can either go to the left and get a value of four or I can go to the right and get a value of four. Well, if we're guaranteed a value of four going to the left or to the right, might as well just go to the left if it means that I could prune this branch, right? So. What that kind of implies is that we only really want to consider subtrees if there's a value that's strictly better than what we've seen so far, right? So we only look at a subtree if alpha is less than beta, okay? Because that implies that we may actually find a value that can get passed up, okay? So with this in mind, let's kind of come back to this initial tree and let's run alpha beta pruning, okay? So if we're running alpha beta pruning on this initial tree, what we want to do is we wanna keep track of the best value seen on the branch so far for the maximizer, right? That's alpha. And we also want to keep track of beta, which is the best value seen on the branch so far for the minimizer, okay? And it's very, very important here to understand that alpha and beta are specific to the current branch, okay? Well, we'll kind of see what that means when we run through this example. So let me just kind of erase some of this stuff here. Okay. And we want a result using alpha beta pruning that's the same result that we came to using our intuition, okay? So when we're at the start node and we have to initialize values for alpha and beta, well, if alpha is the best value seen on the branch so far for the maximizer, if we haven't seen any values yet, let's initialize alpha to negative infinity, right? And we can initialize beta to infinity, right? By that same reasoning, if we haven't seen anything so far for the minimizer, the best value for the minimizer is infinity, right? Okay, so then what we're going to do is if I'm at this node up here, we're going to go to the left. Then I'm going to set alpha, let me change this to be a bit thinner. I'm gonna set alpha equal to negative infinity and I'll set beta equal to positive infinity. Then I'm gonna go down to the left and I'm gonna set again, initially alpha to negative infinity and beta to infinity because we haven't seen any game states or any leaf nodes yet, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're gonna see this leaf node to the left here, right? And this is our current branch, right? So after seeing the value of pre, what we know is that on this current branch, a maximizer node is guaranteed a value of at least three. So since three is better than negative infinity, what we can see here is that 
the maximizer node, its value is updated to three, right? So in other words, what we're saying is that since alpha is the best value seen on the branch so far for the maximizer, looking at this branch here, this maximizer node saw a value of three. So we update alpha to be three because it's better than negative infinity. Then what we'll see is that this maximizer is guaranteed a value of seven by going to the right. So that's better than alpha. So we'll update alpha. Then what we're going to do is we notice that alpha is still greater than beta, right? And if we recall from here, Oh, alpha is less than beta, my bad. So notice here that when alpha is less than beta, we want to keep searching, right? There's no pruning that we can do. So in this case, since alpha is less than beta, we are still continuing to look, right? So kind of following the same game tree logic as always, when we evaluate this node to seven, then we set the value of this node equal to seven, right? Because the maximizer chooses the bigger of the two. Then what we do is that we see we've completely evaluated this node here, okay? So the value that this maximizer node gave is a value of seven, right? It's kind of, you see that this node evaluates a seven and saying, hey, my value is seven. So this minimizer node, if it goes to the left, is guaranteed a value of seven. So what we've done so far is we've updated beta to be seven. So you may say, hey, so I'm like, alpha is seven here, should we update alpha up here as well? Well, we're not gonna update alpha up there because if we're considering this current branch, right? Since we're back to this node right here, this is the current branch, right? So in this current branch, this maximizer node hasn't seen any values yet. This minimizer node has seen a value of seven. So we update beta to be seven, but we can't update alpha quite yet, right? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left, right? So this is kind of our current branch so far, right? So since on this current branch, this minimizer node saw a value of seven, we set beta equal to seven and alpha just stays at negative infinity. Then what we're going to see here is that after we look at this game state here, then what we're going to notice is that since this is a maximizer node, we're going to update the value of alpha to be 10, right? Because 10 is better than negative infinity. And on this branch so far, the maximizer node best value was negative infinity. So now what we're going to see here is that alpha is greater than beta, right? Because 10 is greater than seven. So what this saying, right? is that we want to prune these values. And again, it's important here to understand the intuition of why we prune, right? When alpha is greater than beta, when 10 is greater than seven, what that's telling us is that this maximizer node just saw a value of 10, right? That's where the 10 comes from. But somewhere else up on the tree existed a minimizer node who saw a value of seven. So this minimizer node somewhere up on the tree now can safely prune this possibility of going to the right here, right? Because this minimizer node is guaranteed a value of seven by going to the left. So there's no reason to continue looking at the prospects of this maximizer node, right? This is the same intuition we arrived at the earlier time. Now we're just formalizing the algorithm using alga alpha and beta, okay? So now let's kind of come back. So what we're gonna see here is that the value of this node becomes seven, right? Because we've kind of pruned this possibility here. What we said is that the value of this is at least 10. And then we've kind of ignored this node, you know? So then what we're going to do is we're gonna pass up this value of seven here. And what we're going to say is that if we're considering this node right here, it's, alpha value is now seven, right? Because if we're considering this node, if it goes to the left, it's guaranteed a value of seven. So we set alpha equal to seven for this top node. Then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of build the current branch and go down to the right, 
So we'll set alpha to seven and beta to infinity. And then we'll go down here and set alpha equal to seven and beta equal to infinity. Then what we do is we consider two and five, and then we see that beta gets set to alpha actually. Since we're a maximizer node here and we continue consider values of two and five, seven is better than both two and five, so we ignore both of those values, right? So it turns out the value of this maximizer node is five, but we know it's kind of irrelevant because this top maximizer node would rather go to the left than take either of these values, okay? Then what we're going to notice is that we're going to pass up the value of five here. And what we'll see is that that puts this beta value at five, right? The reason this beta value is five is because this minimizer node had a previous beta value of infinity, right? Since this minimizer node by going to the left is guaranteed a value of five, we can update that beta value from infinity down to five. Right. And now what we'll notice is that alpha is greater than beta because seven is greater than five. And what we can do is we can prune this subtree here. Right. And what we're going to notice is that, or we can say is that the value of this minimizer node is at most five, but it doesn't really matter what it is because this maximizer node is going to take a value of seven by going to the left. And what we'll see here is that by running alpha beta pruning, we arrived at the same decisions pruning wise we did by using the intuition the first time around. So that is all for this video. I apologize if it was very long, but hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of building the intuition together.